In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a spooktacular light fixture. If you want to see what I made, well, then follow me. Well, hello, my pretty little glue dots. I've got a really fun treat for you today. I actually had a subscriber, one of you fabulous glue dots, ask me to do a chandelier for Halloween. Well, on my way, or I should say while I was shopping at Dollar Tree for this stuff to make this chandelier, a whole other idea came to me. So I did that one instead, but that doesn't mean I won't do the chandelier, I still will. This is kind of a morphed version of the two. I know you guys are gonna love this. If you're at all into Halloween, it is so cool. I gotta say, I love Halloween and I really like this DIY. I can't wait to show you guys. Well, let's get to it, but you know, I would really love it if you join our crazy little glue dot family. So hit that subscribe button down below and follow me to check out this DIY. So getting started with this project, we're gonna take the hardest step first so that after that, it will all be easy. And what we're gonna be doing is drilling a hole in the bottom of this bowl, as well as in the bottom center of this plate. We want that hole to be large enough to just fit through. We're gonna pull this part off of our mop handle, broom handle, and we want to be just large enough to fit through there, but snugly. So what I would do is take and measure out and draw out the circle and make sure that your drill hole does not end up bigger than the circle that you drew because we do want this to fit through and hold really snug. The bowl is a lot thicker than the plate. So for the plate, what I did was I used a regular drill bit and through the back side, I drilled a few holes. Then I took a little pliers and I chipped out the pieces so that it would fit perfectly my mop handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this other one drilled and I will be back and hopefully, as I said, this will be the hardest part of our project and the rest will be a cakewalk. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a try. I've drilled one hole with my drill bit so far and I'm gonna kinda go around and drill a few more holes so that then I can just chip out that extra piece that I don't want. So here are the holes. So now I'm just gonna go take a small pliers and try and chip that out as best I can to squeeze in the mop handle. Okay, so you'll see that this actually breaks out pretty easily. This melamine is pretty brittle, so it comes out pretty easy. And you're just gonna, more so than, is kind of just squeeze your pliers and barely jiggle them and you'll see that it it's not so bad. You might wanna wear some protective eyewear, something just in case any of these little pieces flip up into your face. Let's see how that's looking so far. Almost there, just a couple of little pieces still and we'll be able to get that in there. Almost in there and we do, if you can get it in there, you do wanna, oh, there we go. Nice snug fit. You can see that that is really, I mean, this doesn't even spin or move, which is perfect in what we want. The idea of this is that this will become our base and this, our, pole here is going to go through our bowl and down into the plate as well. And then we're gonna press those so that they're flush. So that is the plan, guys. And then once you get those so that they're, everything is flush and in place, you do want to add some E6000 and some hot glue on. It just happens that this bowl fits right along this top rim. I was hoping to find a bowl that sat on the outside, 
but it fits right on top. So I'm actually using this E6000 Plus. I don't know if you guys have used this, but the nice thing with this is that it is um, odorless, so you don't have that obnoxious smell like you have on the other one where you have to open up every window and you know, wear a gas mask and all that. So the, it is um, a little runnier, so you do need to be aware of that. And I typically have a rule that I do not put hot glue over E6000, but I didn't leave space on this because I was chatting. And line it up again and put that all in place. And then I'm gonna be adding some hot glue around here to sort of fill that in and seal that space. As soon as that cools off a bit, I'm also gonna lift this up and glue the underside because we really want this pole to be securely in place. This is what's gonna hold up our entire lamp. So here you can see I went around as well with the hot glue on the underside. The next step will be to take this outside and spray paint this all black. So I'll be right back. My base is solid as can be. I'm so happy about that. The next thing what we're gonna be doing is taking our skulls here and we're gonna be putting them through this pole. For that, you're gonna want an X-Acto knife and figure out kind of the angle you want your skulls to be and that will determine where you're gonna cut your holes through. So how you're gonna do that is by looking to see what angle looks good to you and then determining that that hole needs to be right there. So I'm just gonna poke and crisscross, do like a little X here. But I'm basically, I'm not gonna necessarily cut out a circle, but I think that's gonna be really hard to get it to stay really tight. So I think by doing something like this, that will give a much nicer, tighter hold. So now we're gonna figure out on the top. So if my pole is gonna be going through that part, that means that the hole on the top of the head needs to be somewhat in line with that, wherever you, whatever angle you decide to put it at. And then we're just gonna go through and feed this onto this pole. So I'm putting it in through the top, pressing down and letting that come out the top there, just like that. And here's where this first skull ends up. Now you can do all of them the same way if you want. You can change them up. It's entirely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the holes through them and pass all the skulls on. And then we will be temporarily done with the base and we'll be working on the lampshade part of it. Now that we have the other piece set aside, we're gonna be working on the top part, our lampshade for our lamp. And for that, we're gonna be working with the two little fence pieces that we've gotten. And we're going to need to cut off the little stakes that go into the dirt or the grass or wherever you would normally use these. So you can use scissors for this. You can try using an X-Acto knife, which is probably a little harder. I, I like using my hot knife for this because I can kind of follow the shape of that little bone thing on the bottom here, how it kind of points upwards. Whatever you have available though to you works. If you do like uh, the idea of using the hot knife, I have a link for this down below in the description box. So we do wanna leave our little hooks on, the little latches for the ends. Our next step is going to be to zip tie our fence pieces that now have the spikes cut off to the wreath form. And I'm putting the wreath form upside down so that it doesn't show from the top um, sticking up. This way it kind of sags to the inside of our, um, whatchamacallit thingy, uh, lampshade, thank you. <laughs> so for this I'm gonna be using these little black zip ties. I'm gonna start with this little piece here that we left on that usually latches to the next fence piece. And I'm gonna put it through this and also through the junction point here of my wreath form so that that way it won't slide as I'm trying to work. Then I'm just gonna go around and wherever I can every so many inches, I'm gonna add another zip tie to hold this into place. Now if you have a hot air gun, 
I have this one. Again, there's a link down below for this. I just, you guys don't have to have these tools. I like them, they make them easier. And so to save from you asking me, the links are down below in case you're interested. If you're not, no problem. But what I was gonna say is I like to use this to soften the plastic so that I can get a nice bend to it as I'm working. Here's how it looks with half of this attached already. And what I've done is attached one zip tie to each side of the bones. That's the best way I've found to attach them. Now, your piece should go exactly halfway around, and then we're gonna work on getting the other piece and connecting them. So both pieces are on, and you can see that these sides wanna stick out. They don't wanna take the form of the circle. So there's a couple of options here. You can do another wreath form on the bottom half the same way you did on the top, or what I'm gonna do is heat up the plastic a little, try and give it a little bit of bend here, and then when we're putting these sides together, you they obviously they won't hold just on their own. They'll need to be zip tied. So so I'll be back to show you that. Now I don't know how well this shows, but here I use two zip ties, one from each direction so that um, it would hold it in place better. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off all my extra little zip tie uh, pieces that are sticking out. And then we're gonna be attaching our lights. Now the battery pack for the lights is just about the right size that it can hide behind one of these skulls in here. So that's great actually, and we don't have to worry about how to camouflage it. Make sure that you check that these work before you go to all the trouble of getting them attached though, because I had that problem one year and eh, it was kind of a pain. So we're gonna find your spot here, pick whatever skull you would like and attach your battery pack in there. You can do it using a little bit of hot glue in a couple of the corners and holding it in place. Just make sure that you do leave the screw side so that you can replace the batteries facing out. I'm gonna be using my zip ties to go around and attach the lights kind of in the same manner that I did these outside fence pieces. I would wait and not tighten these up until you know exactly where you want the placement to be. In the meantime, just kind of get them tight enough to where they sort of hold the lights in place, but not so tight that you can't adjust accordingly as you go around. For this next part, we're gonna take the headband and we're gonna be cutting off these little dealy balls here. And we're gonna be using the purple kind of boingy boings to attach to the lampshade around the outer edge. I kind of like the fact that they're um, different lengths and kind of varying and it'll look really cool. So there should be 12 of these purple snake things and there are six sections in between the bones on our lampshade. So I'm gonna be gluing <clears throat> just randomly two per each section so that they're spaced out pretty much evenly all the way around the bottom of the lampshade. And for that, I'm just gonna be adding a little bit of hot glue. Are you guys getting value out of my channel so far? If you're enjoying this project and you'd like to see more like it or even different than this, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the future videos. Once all your little snakes are glued in place, the next thing we're gonna do is actually hang the lampshade onto the base so that we can work on putting our little gauzy fabric on and putting on some of the touches that will really finish it off nicely. So in order to do that, what we're going to be using is this chain from Dollar Tree, the Halloween chain, and these little links are actually open. So we're going to be attaching a link through the wire, the smallest part of the wire wreath form, and then the other end of the link will be attaching here, which this is the, the part of the broom handle that we took off from the other end that we shoved into the plates. I have now put it on top of the screwed side. So just to cover that up. And so we'll need three different segments of the chain so that it hangs balanced. 
So I'm going to do four lengths on each one and every other link is solid. So we are going to need to cut. Otherwise we're going to lose quite a bit of our chain. If you don't. Okay. Now I'm going to try and show you here what we're going to do. And we'll be putting the lampshade over the broom handle part and then attaching the links to this um, little loop here. As you can see, it's hanging crooked and that is because these links have so much further to travel. So I am going to try adding one more link. So guys, this is all on the fly here. So, okay, now I pretty much have it hanging even, I think. So your top piece, your top, whichever one goes on the top is going to need five links. So for that one, you actually will not need to cut one of the links. So while we have this hanging up, it's the perfect time to take our creepy cloth <laughs> and this we're going to be putting kind of draping on the inside so that it looks nice and creepy like it's creepy cloth name. So when it's unfolded, it is one big long piece. You can easily make it around with the length of this on the inside. So if you don't want to use it all, you can actually cut some off, but I'm going to go ahead and start with it. You can zip tie this on, you can hot glue this on, whatever you would like. To start it, I'm just going to give a little knot in the corner and then I'm just going to take it around probably on the second ring in. So the first ring in we've attached these fence pieces. The second ring in will be, it's just an empty ring at this point. The third ring in is where I attached my lights and the fourth ring in is an empty ring, the smallest ring. So I'm going to again go on the second ring in and I'm going to go around and attach this. I'm going to show you that at the end. But before I do, if you want to do something to finish off this top part here, an idea I had, and this is totally optional, there's these really cute little mini skull heads. And I thought those might be kind of cute on top as a little finial. Just go ahead and glue it on with E6000 or a um, combination of E6000 and hot glue. So I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to show you how it looks because this is really cool. All right, you ready to see this?